And welcome back. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about solving quadratic inequalities by using algebra. So the previous video that I did, uh, we did graphing inequalities. Um, uh, one thing that we're going to do here today is we're going to solve quadratic inequalities using algebra. So we're just going to use just arithmetic, okay, just numbers and variables and that kind of stuff. Okay, so we want to treat, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to treat the inequality similar to an equation. We want to solve for x. Now, as we go through this, this is going to be very, very similar to what you already know about solving equations, solving quadratic equations, but this is also going to be very, very different. There's going to be some what we call critical points and there's some test areas that we're going to do. So just try to stick with me on this. So a lot of this is going to seem really, really familiar, and then some of this is going to be very, very vague. Some of this is going to be kind of off the wall because maybe it may have been the first time you've seen this. But anyway, so we want to treat the inequality similar to an equation. We want to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 8x plus 20 is equal to 5, okay? Instead of an inequality symbol, I'm going to write an equal symbol. It's going to make, make it easier for me to solve. Now, what I want to do is I want to solve this like any normal equation, okay? When I want to solve quadratic equations, I want to get everything set equal to 0. So let's take this 5, subtract it over. x squared plus 8x plus 15, subtract that over, equals 0. Okay, you always want to get everything on one side when you solve quadratic equations. Okay, now... There's a couple of different ways we can solve quadratic equations. We can either do factoring, we can do completing the square, or we can do the quadratic formula. Always try to do factoring first. Factoring is so much easier than everything else. So I want to try to factor first. Let's see if I can factor. Okay. So what I need is x's here in the front, and then I need numbers. So in this case, there's going to be either two positives or two negatives. This tells me it's going to be two positives. Okay. So 15 numbers that multiply to get 15, and then add to get 8. Oh, that's kind of easy. That's 3 and 5. Okay. 3 times 5 gives me 15, and then 3 uh, plus 5 gives me 8. So there we go. I uh, factored pretty easily. And then uh, the solutions to this, after you factor solutions, set each one of these parentheses equal to 0 x plus 3 equals 0, equals 0. Uh, subtract 3 over, x is equal to negative 3. Same thing here, x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract that 5 over, x equals negative 5. Okay, so those, those are my two solutions. Now, when we're, now, with a normal quadratic equation, we would be done. Here's our answers, here's our solutions, we're done. But now with an inequality, we're looking for a range of solutions. We're looking for a lot of solutions, not just one or two numbers. We're looking for a bunch of numbers. Okay. So now, these are not solutions. These are not solutions. Don't, 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 get, me, don't get me wrong. They're important. They're just not solutions. These are what we call critical points. Critical, if I can spell it correctly, critical points. Okay, now these are critical points for our inequality that we're going to use. So now, remember whenever we do inequalities, we, we usually have uh, uh, our answers also include inequalities. And we also graph a lot of these so we can get a better idea of what all the solutions are. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, take a number line. Okay, I'm going to take a number line. And I'm going to take the points negative 3 and negative 5. So negative 5 is over here. Okay, I got negative 4 here. And then I got negative 3 here. So here's negative 2 put negative 6 over here. Okay, here are my critical points. 5 and negative 3 are my critical points. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to figure out what numbers that I plug in for x here that are going to give me an answer that's greater than or equal to 5. So there's a bunch of different numbers that are going to give me the ability to do that. I just need to find them. Now, what these critical points are, these kind of give me the, the boundaries of what points are actually going to work, what x's are actually going to work. Okay, so but they, now the thing is, is that, that those are my boundaries. Now I have to figure out kind of what other numbers are going to work. So negative 5, like is negative 6 and negative 7, all these numbers are going to work. Is negative 4 going to work? Hey, negative 2 and negative 1 and 0, are these numbers over here going to work? Uh, things like that. So what, we're gonna, what we have to do here is after we find these critical points, what we also need to do is we need to find some test points. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of labeling here. So critical critical points, a little abbreviating here, okay, of negative 5 and negative 3. Now I want to test some certain numbers. Um, these numbers that I'm going to test are going to be around my critical points. Now, since I have two critical points, I have three areas. I have three areas. You know what? Let me put some, 
let me put some circles here. So here's here's a circle on five, circle on three. I have three different areas that could be solutions to this inequality. This right here is an area. Anything that's smaller than negative five, that's an area. Okay. Anything that's between negative five and negative three, that's my second area that could work. Okay. And then this area over here, any number that's bigger than negative three, that's my third area that could work. And now what I have to do is I I simply just have to test a number inside of all three of those areas to see which areas are going to work. That's basically what I have to do. Okay, so in this case, we call these test points. So in this case, test points, we'll abbreviate here, test points. I'm going to test out uh, a couple of different points. In this case, I'm going to test out. Now, again, when you have a choice of what numbers to choose, try to choose numbers that are easy to work with. So in this case, I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to choose negative six. Negative six is in this area. So that's my first point I'm going to test. Um, in between here, uh, negative four is another point that I'm going to test. And then now over here, uh, now, you might think, oh, I'll just test negative 2. Now, actually, there's an easier number to work with. Negative 1 is here, and 0 is also over here. So I'm actually going to use 0 to test to see if this area right here is a solution. So actually, 0 is going to be my third test point. Okay, I love working with 0. You should really love working with 0. It's very easy to add, subtract, multiply. We can't divide by 0. But it's very, very easy to do most of your operations with 0. So you should always try to use 0 if you have a choice. Okay, now the, the, the reason we call these test points is we're actually going to take these points, we're going to take all three of these points one at a time, and we're going to plug them into this inequality, and we're going to figure out if they work, yes or no, do they work. Okay, so this takes a little bit of arithmetic, just a little bit of arith arithmetic, excuse me, um, but uh, this is kind of the, the, the fastest, most efficient way to figure this out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take in, plug in negative 6. So take negative 6 squared. Uh, plus 8 times negative 6, and then plus 20. And is that going to be greater than or equal to 5? Okay, all right. So um, negative 6 squared is 36, and then this is going to be negative uh, 8 times 6 is 48, plus 20. Is that going to be greater than or equal to 5? So I got that question mark there. Uh, so in this case, uh, get the positive numbers together first. So this is going to be 56. 56 minus 8 is going, to, or minus 48 is going to be 6. So 6 is greater than or equal to 5. This does work. Okay. So we know that negative 6 actually does work. Okay. It actually, um, it actually works in this equation. So let's let's try the other numbers. Okay. So let's try negative negative 4. All right. So now we're going to take negative 4. Plug it in, negative 4 plus 20. Is that going to be greater than or equal to 5? Is that going to be greater than or equal to 5? Now, one thing I have with this board, which I haven't used yet, is the color. So one thing I'm going to do is let's see if I, it'll let me do it. Oh, it won't let me do it. Well, never mind. So I was going to change colors, but that's not going to work for me this time. So let's get back to work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have 16 plus uh, 4 times 8 is 32. So that's actually going to be a negative 32. Let's just put a negative sign there. Let's just do a negative sign. Okay, so 16 and then a negative 32 and then plus 20. So in this case, 16 and 20 make a 30... Blah, 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 blah. What is that? 36. Uh, 36 and then minus 32 is 4, which is not less than or equal to 5. So this is this one doesn't work. This one doesn't work. So this one here is just a no. I know I'm on the edge of my screen here, uh, but this one doesn't work. This one's a big no. Okay, that one's a big no. Um, last but not least, what I have, and uh, I'm going to do my work kind of right here for this one, I'm going to have zero. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in zero. And again, zero is really easy to work with. So I like working with zero. Greater than, is that greater than or equal to 5? So 0 squared is 0, plus 8 times 0 is 0, plus 20. And you can see very quickly that actually 20 is greater than 5. So that one actually does work. Okay, now all that work, okay, all that arithmetic to figure this out. Now why do we do that? Basically what that tells us is that this area over here, this area actually works. That was the check mark. This area here with the negative 4, all this work down here, that tells us this one here is a no. We can't use that area. It's not going to be part of our solution. Okay, And then the 0 area, when we plugged in the 0, that one actually worked, this area over here. So basically what that tells us is that our solutions are going to be this way and this way on our inequality. 
Okay. Now, one thing I also have to think about with these graphs is that do we actually include negative 5 and negative 3? Now, as I look back up to my work, this is a greater than or equal to sign, so the or equal to tells us yes, that we actually do include those points. Okay. So, actually, this right here is kind of a visual. This is a visual on what the graph of this looks like, what all the numbers, uh, what all my solutions are. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write that out, okay, using inequality. So I'm going to, this part right here, these x's are less than or equal to negative 5. So x can be uh, less than or equal to negative 5. And then also uh, this region over here, x's can be greater than or equal to negative 3. X's can be uh, greater than or equal to negative 3. There we go. And uh, if you want to write this, uh, depending on what your teacher wants, if it, sometimes teachers allow you to write this as two inequalities, like I have here, like this right here, or some teachers um, mandate that you have to write these as um, as a, a combined inequality. So if you want to combine them together, um, basically what we can do is uh, this one's in order. Flip this one around, so negative five is greater than or equal to x, and then combine it with this one. X is greater, or excuse me, uh, yeah, greater than or equal to negative three, and so there's our combined inequality. I think either one of these would work. Again, um, for my students, I allow them to write two inequalities because there's two regions here, two regions, so two inequalities. That just makes sense to me. Uh, but some teachers um, mandate that you have to, uh, they they require, I should say, that you have to write it as a single kind of combined inequality. Okay, so that's all of our work for that. Okay, now that's a lot of work. Let me go back through that real quick. So. First thing we want to do when we're solving quadratic inequalities by using algebra, treat the inequality similar to an equation. Solve for x. So we take this inequality, we set it equal to 0, and we solve for x. Now, when you're solving a quadratic equation, you can either solve using factoring, completing the square, or the quadratic formula. And there's a couple other methods, but those are the main three. I would suggest always try to factor first, and that actually was what, what, what worked here. If factoring doesn't work, then try to use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula will always work. Okay. Um, so anyway, we factored, we set our parentheses equal to zero, and we got these these uh, these points here. Now these are critical points. Critical points. Okay. These are not solutions. These are just critical points. Now these critical points, I put them on a number line, and then what I found, the, after I found the critical points, I found test points. Okay, the test points are points that are in certain regions. So it was to the left of negative 5, in between negative 5 and negative 3 right here, and then over here on the right side. So all three of these points were in these certain areas. Okay, now take these numbers, and then, and, and I know it's a lot of arithmetic, but take all those numbers and then just plug them in individually back into your inequality. Okay, so then we plugged in negative 6, found out that it did work. We plugged in negative 4, found out it did not work. And then we plugged in 0, and we found out that it did work. So that tells us that this region worked, this region does not work, this region does work. And so that gives us the two regions for our solution. So the x's are, are less than or equal to negative 5. The x's are greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so those are my, that's my solution here. Or you can also write it as a combined inequality. Again, it depends on what your teacher is asking you to do. Um, for me, for my, for, for my students, what I do is I use this one right here. Um, I think that's okay because that also shows me that there's two regions uh, for this inequality. Uh, but some, stu some teachers will, will require you to write it as a combined inequality, and that's how, what you would have right there. Okay, a little bit lengthy, but once you go through a couple of these problems, you'll, you'll fly through these pretty quickly because it's actually relatively straightforward. Yes, there's a lot of arithmetic that you have to go through. There's a lot of calculating, a lot of algebra that you have to go through. But um, for the most part, it is pretty straightforward. Okay, solve it. Find the critical points. Take those critical points, find test points around it, use those test points, plug them into your quadratic inequality, and then that tells you what regions do work and do not work, and then the regions that do work are going to be your solution. Okay, that was kind of a very long summary of that. All right, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.